Back now, he's best known as a giant of modern literature, author of books like The Corrections and Freedom, which pass a microscope over the American way of life. But the award-winning novelist Jonathan Franzen, who, when he's not writing, is a keen bird watcher, has been spending a lot of time in Europe recently, attacking governments over what he sees as their refusal to implement laws protecting rare migratory birds. Our reporter Katie Rassel caught up with him in South Yorkshire, and her report does contain images of trapped birds. Why I happened to choose birds to love, I don't feel I did, I feel they chose me. I have a sympathy for threatened, embattled things. I think that tends to be part of the novelist's brief, he, who wants to write about the winners. Um, trouble is interesting and trouble is moving. Jonathan Franzen is one of America's most accomplished writers, gracing the cover of Time magazine when his last novel, Freedom, came out. He's probably also his country's best-known bird watcher, which explains why we're in a nature reserve in South Yorkshire. That ch 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 We're hearing a uh, chiff chaff, I think actually two chiff chaffs. Franzen's latest work isn't fiction, but a film about the millions of migratory songbirds illegally killed each year. I know what job you're doing. You're looking for birds. I know what job you're doing. The film, Emptying the Skies, features the campaigners trying to combat the poaching and trapping that goes on in places like Cyprus, Italy, Malta and France. They end up on the plate. Pickled, grilled or boiled, they're a delicacy in Cyprus. In France, the tiny protected ortolan was President Mitterrand's last meal. But who knew there are so many awful ways to trap a songbird? It is moving and it does seem like a particularly terrible thing for a bird which is all about being free to move from one place to, be, to another to be still alive but so completely gummed up and trapped so you can't move your wings, you can't move your legs. Killing songbirds has been illegal in Europe for decades, but millions are trapped as they make their long migratory journey, and it's one of the reasons some species are down 70, 80 percent. Various governments don't care, and that includes the European Union and the European Commission. Um, goes down to federal, state and local level. Despite the fact it's against the law? Despite the fact that it's against the law. What would it mean for us if the chiff chaff didn't make it to Britain? We wouldn't be able to hear it here if you care about birds. And one of the things I love about England is a lot of people do care about birds. I think it, it does transform subtly but significantly your experience of a natural place not to hear a variety of bird songs. Cerulean warblers winged their way up along the coasts of Mexico and Texas and fanned into the hardwoods of Appalachia and the Ozarks. Ruby-throated hummingbirds fattened themselves on the flowers of Veracruz and flew 800 miles across the Gulf. Burning... Franzen sees parallels between what's happening to birds and the plight of his other passion, good writing and reading, under assault from what he believes is our unquestioning obsession with technology and social media. I think there's a rush to assume that the world is going to be transformed by this and that it's going to be transformed in a, in a good way. That's kind of the mantra in Silicon Valley. We're making the world a better place. Well, what does that mean, actually? Uh, I think it's quite possible that they're not making the world a better place. And what's more, I don't see how they can make any money unless they're ripping us off. For the moment, though, Franzen's attention is on the songbird. The film will be in cinemas later this year.